This evening's production of Sorry Wrong Number by Lucille Fletcher is brought to you by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. With the chilling months ahead of us, nothing keeps you warmer than a nice glass of Roma. Pour yourself a glass, sit back, and enjoy the show. Good evening. This is The Man in Black. I am called The Man in Black because I have an aversion for light. I am here in the studio tonight. What are you doing? Dim the light, you fool. Imbeciles. Excuse me, where was I? Oh yes. Tonight, I am here to introduce you to a program written by a woman who has seen into the darkest side of human weakness. The hateful, the mean, thoughtless that leads to... Murder. Tonight, from San Diego, we present a compelling actress we discovered in the dark and dreary eucalyptus groves of Rancho Santa Fe. Miss Kayla Adams appears in a study of terror written by Lucille Fletcher called Sorry Wrong Number, about a woman who is caught in an unfortunate predicament involving the telephone company and the police. This program is not for the squeamish. Listen at your own risk. Operator, I've been trying to call Murray Hill for 0098 for the last half hour, and it's been busy. I don't see how it could possibly be busy that long. Can you try that number for me, please? I'll be glad to try that number for you. One moment, please. I don't see how it could be busy all that time. It's my husband's office, and I'm all alone here in the house. My health is very poor, and I've been feeling so nervous all day. Ringing Murray Hill 40098. Hello? Hello? Is Mr. Stevenson there? Hello, hello. Hello? Hello, George? Yes, this is George speaking. Hello? Who is this? What number am I calling, please? I'm here with our client. Oh, good. Is everything okay? Is the coast clear for tonight? Yes, George. He says the coast is clear for tonight. Okay, okay. Where are you now? In a phone booth. Don't worry. Everything's okay. Very well. You know the address? Yes, I know, I know. Let's see now. At 11 o'clock, the private patrolman goes around the corner to 2nd Avenue for a beer. That's right. 11 o'clock. And be sure all the lights downstairs are out. Okay. There should be only one light visible from the street. Okay, okay. What's that? Just a minute, George. Oh, our client tells me that at 11.15 a train crosses the bridge. It makes a noise in case a window is open and she should scream. Hello? What number is this, please? Okay, I understand. That's 11.15 the train, eh? Yeah, do you remember everything else, George? Yeah, yeah. I'll make it quick. As little blessed as possible, because our client does not wish to make her suffer. That's right. You use a knife? Yes, a knife. It will be okay. The afterwards, I remove the rings and the bracelets and the jewelry in the bureau drawer because our client wishes it to look like a simple robbery. Don't worry. Everything's okay. I know. Oh, how awful! How unspeakably awful! Operator! Your number, please. Operator, I've just been cut off. What number were you calling? Well, Operator, I was supposed to be calling Murray Hill for 0098, but it wasn't. Some wires must have got crossed. I was cut into a wrong number, and I... I've just heard the most dreadful thing. Something about a, a murder, and... And, Operator, you simply have to retrace that call at once. I... I beg your pardon? Uh, may I help you? I know it was a wrong number. I had no business listening. But these two men, they were cold-blooded fiends, and they're going to murder somebody. Some poor, innocent woman who was all alone in a house near a bridge. And we've got to stop them. We've just got to. What number are you dialing? It doesn't matter what number I was calling. This was a wrong number, and you dialed it for me. And we've got to find out what it was immediately. What number did you call? 
Oh, why are you so stupid? What time is it? Do you mean to tell me that you can't find out what that number was just now? I'll connect you to, your, to the chief operator. Oh, I think it's perfectly shameful. Now look, it was obviously a case of some little slip of the finger. I told you to try Murray Hill for 0098 for me. You dialed it, but your finger must have slipped, and I was connected with some other number. And I could hear them, but they couldn't hear me. Now, I simply failed to see why you couldn't just make that same mistake again, on purpose. Why couldn't you try to dial Murray Hill for 0098 in the same careless way? Murray Hill 40098. I will try to get that for you. Thank you. I'm sorry, Murray Hill 4009 is busy. Operator! Operator! Your call, please. You didn't try to get that wrong number at all. I asked you explicitly, and all you did was dial correctly. I'm sorry, what number are you calling? Can't you for once forget what number I'm calling and do something for me? Now, I want you to trace that call. It's my civic duty, and it's your civic duty to trace that call and apprehend those dangerous killers. And if you won't... I will connect you with the chief operator. Well, please. All this talk can't make anyone understand. Now, we bring you an ad brought to you by the Bell Phone Company. Thank you for choosing the Bell Phone Company. The service answers every call with a smile. You will always find an operator on call to help with whatever you may need. So don't forget to pick up your phone and call the Bell Phone Company. The best service money can buy. And now, back to our featured presentation. This is the Chief Operator. Oh, Chief Operator, I want you to trace a call, a telephone call, immediately. I don't know where it came from or who was making it, but it's absolutely necessary that it be tracked down. Because it was about a murder that someone's planning. A terrible, cold-blooded murder of a poor, innocent woman tonight at 11.15. I see. Can you trace it for me? Can you track down those men? Well, I'm not certain. It depends. It depends on what? It depends on whether the call is still going on. If it's a live call, we can trace on the equipment. If it's been disconnected, we can't. Disconnected? If the parties have stopped talking to each other. Oh, but of course they must have stopped talking to each other by now. That was at least five minutes ago, and they didn't sound like the type that would make a long call. Well, I could try tracing it. May I have your name, please? Mrs. Stevenson. Mrs. Albert Stevenson. But listen. And your telephone number, please. Plaza 32098. But if you go on wasting all this time... Why do you want this call traced? Why? No reason. I mean, I merely felt very strongly that something ought to be done about it. These men sounded like killers. They're dangerous. They're going to murder this woman at 11.15 tonight. I thought the police ought to know. Have you reported this to the police? Well, no. N not yet. You want this call checked purely as a private individual? Yes, but meanwhile... I'm sorry, Miss Stevenson, but I'm afraid we couldn't make this check for you and trace the call just on your say-so. But... As a private individual. Why? We have to have something more official. Oh, for heaven's sakes. You mean to tell me I can't report this going to be a murder without getting tied up in all this red tape? Why, it's perfectly idiotic. Well, all right, all right, I'll call the police. I'm sure that'll be the best way to deal with. Ridiculous. Never heard of such nonsense. Your call, please. Police department. Get me the police department, please. Ringing the police department. Oh, can't you ring them direct? Police Station 43, Sergeant Martin speaking. Police Department, this is Mrs. Stevenson, Mrs. Albert Smith Stevenson of 5353 North Sutton Place. I'm calling to report a murder. Eh? I mean, the murder hasn't been committed yet. I just overheard plans for it over the telephone, over a wrong number that the operator gave me. I've been trying to trace down the call myself, but everybody's so stupid. And I guess in the end, you're the only people that could do anything. Oh, yes, ma'am. It was a perfect, definite murder. I heard their plans distinctly. Two men were talking, and they were going to murder some woman at 11.15 tonight. She lived in a house near a bridge. Are you listening to me? Huh? Oh, yes, ma'am. And there was a private patrolman on the street. He was going to go around for a beer on 2nd Avenue. And there was some third man, a client, who was paying to have this poor woman murdered. They were going to take her rings and her bracelets and, and, and use a knife? Oh, it's unnerved me dreadfully, and I'm not well. Hmm, 
Yes, yes, I see. When was all this, ma'am? About eight minutes ago. Oh, then you can do something. You do understand. What's your name, ma'am? Mrs. Stevenson. Mrs. Albert Stevenson. And your address? 5353 North Sutton Place. That's near a bridge. The Queensboro Bridge. You know. And we have a private patrolman on our street. Yeah. And 2nd Avenue is... No, uh, what was that number you were calling? Murray Hill 40098. But was it the number I overheard? I mean, Murray Hill 40098 is my husband's office. Mm hmm. He's working late tonight, and I was trying to reach him to ask him to come home. Yeah. I'm an invalid, you see. And it's the maid's night off, and I hate to be all alone, even though he says. Yeah, well. And as long as I have the telephone here right beside my bed. Well, we'll look into it, Mrs. Stevenson, and see if we can check with the telephone company. The telephone company said they couldn't check the call. The parties have already stopped talking. I've already taken care of that. Oh, you have? Yes, and personally, I feel you ought to do something more immediate and drastic than just check the call. What good does checking the call do if they've stopped talking? By the time you've tracked it down, they've already committed the murder. Yeah, well, we'll take care of it. Don't you worry. I say the whole thing calls for a search. A complete and thorough search of the whole city. I'm very near the bridge, and I'm not very far you said. from Fifth Avenue. And I know I feel a whole lot better if you send around a radio car to this neighborhood at once. Well, what makes you think this murder is going to be committed in your neighborhood, ma'am? Well, I... I don't know. Only the coincidence is so horrible. Second Avenue, the patrolman, the bridge. Yeah, well, Second Avenue, you know, is a very long street, ma'am. And you know how many bridges there are in the city of New York alone? Not to mention Brooklyn, Staten Island, the Queens, and the Bronx. I know that. How do you know it isn't some little house on Staten Island, on some little Second Avenue you never heard about? How do you know they're even talking about New York at all? But I heard it on the New York dialing system. Well, maybe it was a long-distance call you overheard. No. You know, telephones are funny things. Now look, why don't you look at it this way? Supposing you hadn't broken in on that telephone call. Supposing you got your husband the way you always do. You wouldn't be so upset, would you? I... I... Well, I suppose not. But it sounded so inhumane, so cold-blooded. Well, a lot of murders are plotted in this city every day, ma'am. We managed to prevent almost all of them, but a clue of this kind is so vague. It isn't much more use to us than no clue at all. Surely you can... Unless, of course, you have some reason for thinking this call was phony, and someone was planning to murder you? Me? No! I hardly think so. I, I mean, why should anybody? I'm alone all day and night. I see nobody except my maid, Eloise, and she's a big 200-pounder. Yeah. She's too lazy to bring up my breakfast tray. Mm -hmm. And the only other person is my husband, Albert. He's crazy about me. He adores me. He waits on my hand and foot and has mm -hmm. scarcely left my side since I took sick 12 years ago. Yeah, well, then there's nothing for you to worry about. You just leave the rest of this to us. We'll take care of it. Well, what will you do about it? It's so late. It's nearly 11 now. We'll take care of it, lady. Well, will you broadcast all over the city? And send out squads. And warn your radio cars to watch out, especially in suspicious neighborhoods like mine. Lady, I said we'd take care of it. Now, I've got a couple other matters here on my desk that require immediate attention. So good night, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, you. You idiots. Oh, why did I hang up the phone like that? Now he'll think I'm a fool. Why does Albert come home? Why doesn't he? I'll get the operator again. Your call, please. Operator, for heaven's sakes, will you ring that Murray Hill for zoo zoo night eight number again? I can't think what's keeping him so long. I will try it for you. I'm sorry, Murray Hill 40098 is busy. I will try- I can hear it. You don't have to tell me. I know it's busy. Oh, if I can only get out of this bed for a little while. If I could get a breath of fresh air or just lean out of the window and see the street. Break away from the show to bring you the way you can support your troops. To make this a winning 1943. To show your American spirit. Buy war bonds. For our glorious country to have its colors fly and need its glorious birds to be built, built, built. To take tyranny face on and to triumph it over our foes, show your support and buy war bonds. 
And with that, we bring you back to the show. Hello? Albert? Hello? 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 What's the matter with this phone? Hello? Hello? Oh, for heaven's sakes, who is this? Hello? 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 Who's trying to call me? What are they trying to do to me? Your call, please. Hello, operator. I don't know what's the matter with this telephone tonight, but it's positively driving me crazy. I've never seen such inefficient, miserable service. Now look. Look, I'm an invalid. I'm very nervous. And I'm not supposed to be annoyed, but if this keeps going on much longer... What seems to be the trouble? Well, everything's wrong. I've had one bit of satisfaction out of one call I've made this evening. The whole world could be murdered for all you people care. Now, my phone keeps ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing, and every five seconds or so when I pick it up, there's no one there. I am sorry. If you will hang up, I will test it for you. I don't want you to test it for me. I want you to put that call through whatever it is at once. I'm afraid I cannot do that. I... You can't? And why? Why, may I ask? The dial system is automatic. If someone Ugh. is trying to dial your number, there is no way to check whether the call is coming through the system or not. Ugh. Unless the person who is trying to reach you complains to his particular operator. Well, of all the stupid. And meanwhile, I've got to sit here in my bed suffering every time that phone rings, imagining everything. I will try to check the trouble. Check it. Check it. For you, ma'am. Oh, what's the use of talking to you? You're so stupid. I'll fix her. How, how dare she speak to me like that? How dare she speak to me like that? Your call, please. Young woman, I don't know your name, but there are ways of finding you out, and I'm going to report you to your superiors for the most unpardonable rudeness and insolence that has ever been my privilege. Oh, get me the business office at once. You may dial that number direct. Dial it direct? I'll do no such thing. I don't even know the number. The number is in the directory. Or you may secure it by dialing information. Listen here, you... Oh, what's the use? Oh, for heaven's sakes, I'm going out of my mind. Hello? Hello? Stop ringing me, do you hear? Answer me. Who is this? Do you realize you're driving me crazy? Who's calling me? What are you doing it for? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it, I say! If you don't stop ringing me, I'm going to call the police, do you hear? Hello? Hello? <laughs> oh, Albert could only come home. Oh, let it ring! Let it go on ringing! I won't answer it, I won't answer it this time! If it goes on ringing all night, I won't answer it! I won't answer it! It stopped. Why did it stop ringing all of a sudden? What time is it? Where's my clock? Where is it? Five to eleven. They've decided something. They're sure I'm home. They've heard my voice answering. That's why they've been ringing. Oh, where is she? Why doesn't she answer? Your call, please. Where were you just now? Why didn't you answer? Give me the police department. Oh. I'm sorry, the line is busy. I will call you when- Busy! That's impossible! The police department can't be busy. There must be other lines available. The line is busy. I will try to get them for you later. No! I've got to speak to them now. It may be too late. I've got to talk to someone. What number do you wish to speak to? I don't know, but there must be someone to protect people besides the police department. A detective agency? Uh, uh... You will find agencies listed in the classified directory. I don't have a classified. I mean, I'm too nervous to look it up. I don't know how to use the phone. I will connect you with information. Perhaps she'll be able to help you. No, no. Oh, you're being spiteful, aren't you? You don't care what happens to me. I can die and you won't care. Oh, stop it. Stop it. I can't stand it anymore. What do you want? Stop ringing. Will you stop? Hello? 
Uh, is this Plaza 32099? Yes. Yes, this is Plaza 32099. This is Western Union. I have the telegram here for Mrs. Albert Stevenson. Is there, there anyone there to receive the message? I, I'm Mrs. Stevenson. The telegram is as follows. Mrs. Albert Stevenson, 53rd North Sutton Place, New York, New York. Darling, terribly sorry. Tried to get you for last hour, but line busy. Leaving for Boston at 11 p.m. tonight on urgent business. Back tomorrow afternoon. Keep happy. Love. Signed, Albert. Oh, no. Do you wish us to deliver a copy of the message? No. No, thank you. Thank you, madam. Good night. Good night. No! No, I don't believe it! He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Nobody knows I'll be all alone. It's some trick. It's some trick, I know it! Your call, please. Try that number, Murray Hill, 40098 for me just once more, please. You may dial that number direct. Oh! 40098. I can't stay alone tonight. I can't. If I'm alone one more second, I'll go mad. I don't care what he says or what the expense is. I'm a sick woman. I'm entitled to some consideration. This is information. May I help you? I, I want the telephone number of Henchley Hospital. Henchley Hospital? Do you have the street address? No. No, it's somewhere in the 70s. It's a very small, private, and exclusive hospital where I had my appendix out two years ago. Henchley. H-E-N-C-H-L-Y. One moment, please. Please hurry. And please, what is the time? You may find out the time by dialing Marion 71212. Oh, for heaven's sakes, I have no time to be dialing. The number of Henchley Hospital is Butterfield 89970. Is this Henchley Hospital? Henchley Hospital. Nurses Registry. Who is it that you want to speak to? I want the nurses registry at once. I want a trained nurse. I want to hire her immediately for the night. I see. What is the nature of the case, madam? Nerves. I'm very nervous. I need soothing and companionship. You see, my husband is away and I'm... Have you been recommended to us by any doctor in particular, madam? No, but I really don't see why all this is necessary. I want a trained nurse. I was a patient in your hospital two years ago, and after all, I do expect to pay this person for attending me. We quite understand that, madam, but these are war times, you know. Registered nurses are very scarce just now, and our superintendent has asked us to send people out only on cases where the physician in charge feels is absolutely necessary. Well, it is absolutely necessary. I'm a sick woman. I'm, I'm very upset. Very. I'm alone in this house, and I'm, I'm an invalid. And tonight I overheard a telephone conversation that upset me dreadfully. A woman is going to be killed when a train crosses a bridge. In fact, if someone doesn't come at once, I'm afraid I'll go out of my mind. Well, I'll speak to Miss Phillips as soon as she comes in. And what is your name, madam? Miss Phillips? When do you expect her to come in? I really couldn't say. She went out to supper at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock? But it's not 11 yet. Oh. Oh, my clock has stopped. I thought it was running down. What time is it? Just 15 minutes past 11. What was that? What was what, madam? That. That clicked just now. My own telephone. As though someone had lifted the receiver off the hook. Off the extension telephone downstairs. I didn't hear it, madam. Now about this no But I did. There's someone in this house. Someone downstairs. In the kitchen. And they're listening to me now. They're listening. I won't pick it up. I won't let them hear me. Uh, I'll be quiet, and they'll think. Oh, but if I don't call someone now while they're still down there, there'll be no time. I've got to get that operator. Call, please. Operator, operator. I, I'm in desperate trouble. I. I'm sorry. I cannot hear you. Please speak louder. I don't dare speak louder. There's someone listening. Can you hear me now? I'm sorry, but. But you've got to hear me. Please, please. You've got to help me. There's someone in this house. Someone who's going to murder me. And you've got to get in touch with the... There it is. Did you hear it? 
He put it down. He put down the extension phone. He's coming up the stairs. Give me the police department. One moment, please. I will connect you. Okay. Okay. Hurry. I can hear him. Oh no. Please, oh god. Hurry. Police Department, Precinct 53, Sergeant Martin speaking. Eh? Police Department? Oh, I'm sorry. Must have got the wrong number. Don't worry. Everything's okay. While things did not turn out too well for Mrs. Stevenson, Fortunately, the author of tonight's tale spared you the embarrassment of including a song performed by our producer's wife. Mr. Stevenson, by the way, did not completely escape justice. He moved to California with his secretary, Marge, where he has won a seat on the San Diego City Council. Sorry, Wrong Number was originally produced and broadcast live by Columbia Broadcasting on May 25, 1943, starring the legendary actress of the illegitimate theater, Miss Agnes Moorhead. Kathleen Downs directed Kayla Adams, Jaslyn Rivero, Brian Agosto, and Nina Schulenberg in tonight's reprise of Suspense. This is your announcer, Lane Mackey. Thank you all for watching our production of Sorry Wrong Number by Lucille Fletcher. Again, a huge thanks to our sponsor, Roma Wines, for making this production possible. Please stop by the gift shop on the way out and grab a bottle of Roma's fine red wine. Have a good night and no drinking and driving.